Simon Arthur Noel Raven was a British writer. He was born in 1927 in London, the son of Arthur Raven and Esther Christmas. He attended Charterhouse School but was expelled in 1945 for homosexual activity. He then went on to do his national service in the British Army in the Parachute Regiment before going to King's College to read classics. In 1951 he married Susan Kilner because she was pregnant due to him and then avoided her until their divorce in 1957. After having to leave King's due to lack of funds, he rejoined the army, serving in West Germany, Kenya and Shrewsbury. He then turned to writing as he had no other career prospects. His first novel, The Feathers of Death, came out in 1959. He is best regarded for his ten-volume series, Alms for Oblivion, and for his TV dramatization of Anthony Trollope's The Palisers. His 1990 book of personal anecdotes, Is There Anybody There, said the Traveller, was withdrawn due to many legal threats over libel. In 1993, he was elected Fellow of the Royal Society of Literature. A heavy drinker, gambler and cricketer, he died in 2001 in London after several strokes. Today, we will review his 1960 Doctors Wear Scarlet, one of Cairo Edward Wagner's 39 best horror novels. Anthony Seymour, very much based on Raven himself, suddenly meets a man from Scotland Yard at his office. Inspector John Terrell is there to ask him questions about Anthony's dear friend Richard Fountain, who went off to Greece and caused no end of an entirely vague, nondescript trouble. So Terrell wants to know Fountain's entire history with Seymour. Anthony obliges and tells him of their time at Lancaster College, and how when Anthony came back from the war, he found Richard in the thrall of senior tutor Walter Goodrich. Walter has in mind to marry Richard to his daughter Penelope, and to plan out his entire academic career for him, something which Richard sometimes rebels against, acting rather horribly towards Penelope herself, undeservedly so. Then, after telling Terrell how Richard helped quell a colonial rebellion by using the corpse of one of his friends, he is told by Terrell to go to Greece to find Richard before the Greek police can. Assembling Richard's friends, the totally heterosexual chum he hangs around with, Pierce Clarence, the totally non-romantic nature of their relationship is assured to us by Raven many, many times, and his old army superior, Major Longbow, the free go to Greece. After mucking around Crete, they are given a clue by a mad professor who may or may not be dead, and find the island of Idra or Hydra. Here they are told that a ship landed at an abandoned harbour, carrying a seeming dead man on a stretcher, who was pulled out all the time by a mysterious woman. Following her tracks from the interior to the Monastery of the Blood of Christ, with the help of an alcoholic American, Pierce finds a dead child in the Oracle Superior confirming his suspicions on what the ancient sickness that was said to come out of Hydra was, and which they were healing Richard of but only just healing so he could be made sick again by the woman. And here begins the book's insistence it has no idea who these vampires are people are talking about. Absolutely no idea whatsoever, because Piers knows, but always refuses to tell his comrades at the last moment. We have four or five conversations where he vague books the entire time, then gets mad at Seymour for being obtuse. They find the woman took Richard to Sfakion, where they find him in an abandoned Venetian fort, the woman Chrysase about to suck him dry. Piers strangles her in time, but then they were expelled from the island by the mayor as if they and their friend were contagious. The atmosphere here is truly great, and it's a shame there is a third of the book left at this point because it's quite a drop, from chasing a vampire woman across the sea from an old monastery to a crumbling ruined fort. The last third is about everyone trying to make Walter not piss off Richard so he would kill somebody, and watching people go about Cambridge on eggshells while Walter is petty is not that fun.